Hello everybody, so tonight I'm going to be talking to Vincent, the king of TikTok, yes, I'm sure all of you guys saw him, if you haven't, you will meet him today, tonight, here, live, on IG, Hey! hey. <laughs> How are you? What's up? I'm good, I'm good. How are you? I'm good. Please tell me where are you from originally? Because originally? I thought you were French. <laughs> and I'm like, mom, you say yeah. you <laughs> How would you pronounce my name in French? Bon song, I love guess. It. Love it, love it. <laughs> But um, I'm originally, my parents are from Suriname. Where, where, where? Suriname, that's uh, next to Brazil. Okay. And yeah. you were born so, in... So my parents are, I'm, I was born in Amsterdam, in Netherlands. Okay, Netherlands. You know, it's, uh, it's something fun and very interesting to do, in my personal opinion. I love yeah. dancing. So I wanted you to tell us uh, how was like growing up in Netherlands, being black, you know, uh, <laughs> ever in your life suffer from, you know, racism, never at all. You are one of the, you know, the lucky ones. Growing up in the Netherlands as a, as a child, for me was, um, uh, I, I, I was I, I was raised with uh, we were the f five of us so I have a big sister big brother this is me then I have my younger sister and later there was this little baby so we were the five of us I'm a, I'm in the middle all right okay. so I wasn't raised with a lot of money so no toys no birthday parties I'm a bit of an introvert so I like to stay inside. <laughs> no. Wait, how yeah, come? Yeah, yeah. Um, I don't know. Some people are just born like that, I guess. <laughs> the thing is, when I dance and do my videos, another part of me can just express, you know? Yeah. So as a, uh, when I dance, I can just have another part of me just express. But mainly, I like, I kind of like to stay, be inside and just be low-key. <laughs> so, um, but as a kid, I stayed at home a lot, you know, and if I went outside, it was just one in, once in a blue moon. I was raised in a school where there were, uh, mul it was a multicultural school. So there were a lot of different cultures. So I was raised with people from Ghana, uh, a, a guy from, I think he was from China, I think. Uh, uh, one guy from Iraq. So there were different colors. So I did not, uh, uh, see color immediately, but I started noticing differences. But still, I did not judge people on how they, you know, uh, what their color, uh, the uh, color of their skin was. Uh, later in my teenage years, go, going to from like between 15 and going adult, like being 18, <clears throat> that's when I started hearing, you know, N words and starting understanding it and just see seeing how people were treated differently. So <laughs> I was raised with Dutch culture. Mm -hmm. So I was not raised with the history <clears throat> uh, on school. I was not educated <clears throat> on the history of uh, <clears throat> my heritage, my heritage from uh, the people from Suriname. But I never learned about how, how I got in the Netherlands as a, like my parents got in the Netherlands as people from Suriname. I never knew that the Suriname was colonized by the Dutch. I never knew that. I was just celebrating all the the Dutch traditions and stuff like that. Didn't know it. How old are you now? <laughs> How old are you? You should you should know if you you know have a guess. You should know you do some research. No, I'm 35. Uh, well, I'm 29. Uh, but I mean, you look you look much younger. That's why I was, I don't know if it's the yellow hoodie or you know, uh, but you look much younger. <laughs> <laughs> In areas like yours, dancing, acting, uh, entertainment in general, or um, 
when it comes to theater. I feel like people want more. I don't know if it's because let's talk dance because well it's our topic. I feel like the fact that you in cultures doing the same it make them forget their differences. With dance, the the focus is we 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 dance. So we want to enjoy the dance and dance is our main goal. We want to get better, we want to and because you do it together also, you make a bond. You know what I'm saying? Exactly. So that's that simply said that's where it comes from because when you dance uh, when you're in a studio together, that energy that you feel doing it together is there. But I don't know everybody personally, so I don't know what's in everybody's heart because there is jealousy. There is there is a uh, uh, competition, you know. There is also in the dance scene, there's also a difference between, you know, uh dark skin people dancing doing jobs and light skin people dancing. So it's it's there in the industry in the business, but just playing dancing just in a dance class just vibing on the streets or on a party then it just comes down to dancing. So yeah, there is there is there is a community, there is a bond, but there's also the other side. There's also people grouping together, uh uh politics and stuff like that. But that's when it comes to power. When power is in uh in, uh when power is in play with dancing, that's when people get corrupt. When it's just about dancing, that's when the all corruption and stuff fall fades away and that is also a, a big reflection also on uh it 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 reminds me of uh the world the the society because it's dancing people is like are like oh it's just for fun and it's not serious but it's a big reflection because you do it together dancing you can also do it as an individual but together you can do a lot you can learn from each other you respect each other and so it has a lot of uh similarities to just social life you are sooner to help somebody that you have a connection with so for yeah. me it's important that people start making connections because if you have a bond with somebody else they will help you because you have a connection because you can relate and that's why i think dance is so beautiful because it connects people to each other what connects you and me dance connected you and you and i um what connects people that uh when people go to a soccer game they love the same team or they just love the sport i do believe with arts people can tell their stories i think we need stories i think there we should be more creative in educating other people that don't know about our struggle or other people's struggle we have to be the ones telling about our story or telling our story sharing it Thank instead you. of or or some or other or to somebody do it. else will tell your story and they will tell it in a different way which exactly. causes this problem because they exactly. tell the stories and you know changing the narrative we have to change the narrative we have to have storytellers tell- stories can make or break you if somebody tells me oh sharam she did this and this and this and this i'm maybe i might believe it and i don't even know you Tell me, how did you get into the dance hall? How did how did this all started? It started when I was uh 15. I used to um I used to hate dancing. You cannot be serious. No, I to- I, I am dead serious. I used to hate it because from home, my mother, my sister, everybody used to tell me oh you dance dance with your sister do do the dance and whatever and i hated it i was like because i don't like to be forced to do things <laughs> so okay. i that's why i hated it you know and and uh so for a few years i was like i hate dancing but then on television because they always used to play mtv like a music and there were always music videos so i uh i saw usher on tv okay and i was like oh that guy is cool he's dancing with girls is that how i will get a girl I like knew hmm. <laughs> i knew the girls were involved so you started when you were 15 yeah which is pretty late which was yesterday right <laughs> <laughs> no like being 15 and starting dancing 
actually in the dance world is kind of late because there are kids that are nine and they're really well and really good at dancing. But uh, yeah, so I started at 15 and um, Usher inspired me to dance. I was like, okay, I wanna, I wanna be him. Cause you know, as a, as, as a, as a young dark skinned child, I saw somebody that I kind of looked like. Yes. So that role model was very important, you know? And uh, if I look back at it, and I started um, uh, uh, just, I went into a dance group like you did, <laughs> in a dance team. But uh, from there, I um, got into a dance studio, taking classes. I never had any formal training though. I, I was never in a dance school, so I taught myself a lot from watching and just watching videos and learning from, you know, people, but not officially in a dance school. Uh, because I'm actually my education. I, I'm a graphic designer, so I'm, I'm actually I yeah. <laughs> I'm actually pretty much a geek. So I like computers and stuff. <laughs> so I'm Dancing. talking to okay. So I'm talking to a nerd guy. Okay, yeah. in computers and technology. Like on top of it, he knows how to dance. Yo, that's I don't know, girls. What do you What do you want more? That's amazing. <laughs> So how does the Legacy Dance family comes into your life? Whew. So I've always had a, pa have had a passion for teaching. Mm -hmm. And I always like to work with um, people that are very passionate. Okay. And I find that passion in young kids because they dance with without thinking about how they're going to pay their rent. And that gives me a lot of joy, you know, them, when they show up and they're like very eager. So I decided to um, uh, 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 set up a group that wants to learn from me. Okay. And uh, also to pass on my teachings, like the things that I've learned, my experiences, because, you know, maybe in five years, I can't dance the way I can dance now, you know, I, I get older too, and uh, I want to pass on what I know, my knowledge, okay. which is legacy. Amazing. How many students, how many people can be in the class? Well, there, there is, the, legacy is a set group. There are 12 of them, mm -hmm. and, and, that's, uh, and, and that's it. So it's a closed group. And mm -hmm. uh, they have their own personal lives, of course, and they dance everywhere. I trade them actually one time in the week, and we make videos. Uh, right now, I can't, I don't, I can't see them because of the whole quarantine uh, situation. Yes, but we stay in touch. Did you travel as well to teach in different, uh, different cities, different countries? I have, I have, and I love doing that because uh, that was, I think, maybe a good twelve years ago. I used to do that a lot. Okay. Uh, I, I went to uh, like a lot of countries teaching workshops. I have a feeling that you will start doing this very soon again. Yeah. Yeah. That's a that's a good feeling because that's that's my that, that is my goal. Yes. That's my goal. I after this after when we can start flying again, I I will I will actually want to travel around the world and start visiting you know, uh, people that like to dance and, you know, want to dance with me and we're just gonna have some fun. So yeah, I, I would like to travel and just meet people, learn, grow, and uh, yeah, learn from different cultures also. Yeah, um, and also, because I have a YouTube channel, so I like to, I would like to expand that and have also different teachers on it to okay. teach and, and uh, also, you know, just, uh, um, because, you know, dance is fun and I think people, there are people around the world that also don't have a lot of money or don't have the dance studio or, you know, or maybe are shy. They don't want to go to a dance studio because people are sometimes are judgmental. And so if you so, dance, you know, just for, for fun and from your own home, you can start building a certain confidence. Later, join a dance studio or don't, you know, you can just dance wherever you want or just do it with your friends or with your family. Just, you know, have fun with it. And I've experienced also, you know, people saying like, oh yeah, but you can't dance. They used to tell me I couldn't dance. And look where you are now. <laughs> How is it in Netherlands? Like, in can you really, you know, like, pay your rent, pay your bills, travel, do this, do that? 
if you are um, a coach or a choreographer, is it possible? It, okay, it is possible because I am the result of that. But okay. it's not for a lot of people. It's maybe me and three others. But okay. they there do their jobs, I do my type of jobs because I work a lot with movies and uh, uh, sometimes also TV shows. I've done a lot of TV shows, uh, live performances. So as a choreographer, it is difficult. Okay. But not impossible. As a dance teacher, it's definitely possible. You have to also prepare yourself financially, mentally, because you can earn money, but how much do you spend? This studio is the studio that I used to see on TikTok, right? This yeah. Blue light. This, this. Yeah. Yeah. One million followers. Yeah. People who follow you, people who love you, people who like dancing like you. How did this happen? First of all, it's, it, I think it's a, such a beautiful thing and I, I'm very like, I'm very, how do you say that? Um, very flattered about it. And it's like, it's a, it's a, it's a great feeling to, to see how people interact with what I do. Um, how I did it is um, before I um, went, in the beginning of TikTok, I started, analyzing it because I like to analyze things. I started looking at TikTok like, okay, what works? You know, we have, let's say we have Charlie D'Amelio, which she is the most popular person on TikTok. So I was like, why is she so popular? So when she does it, it looks like you can do it too for some people then, most people. So that's the <laughs> idea that I would get. So because it, 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 you get that idea like, oh, maybe I can do it too. So people, you know, try to be like her also a little bit. You know, she, she's not... The thing is with TikTok, there are dancers on TikTok that are really good. But the thing is, it's not about being better on TikTok. It's about enjoying. And having fun. And having right? fun. People like connections. People like to okay. be, you know, involved or, you know, uh, like to learn something. So if you can teach people something, that's the most beautiful thing that there is. You can just teach something to people. So that's how I started observing TikTok, like what works and what doesn't work. For me, the important thing is that you enjoy dancing because dancing did not start as a, as a profession. Okay. Dancing started as something to enjoy. Yeah. In the Asian time, people used to dance around the fire or in Africa, people dance just you know, for, for the, for the, for the, for the spirit, spirituality or culture, but not to perform on a stage or perform with an artist. Someone, someone said here, self-expression. Yes, I agree exactly, with that. Exactly. That's, that's the core yeah. of dancing, you know, but the thing is, I'm not saying dancing has one purpose. Dancing can have a lot of purposes, but the whole commercial stuff and showing off in, on the internet and stuff like that, that was not there yet. That's, that came later. So, if you look at it at its core, it's 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 for fun. It's for your self-expression, like that person said. It's just for for the joy. So if you go back to that, then you reach a lot more people. So what I do with my TikTok is connecting with people that love to dance, and I don't care about how good you are. I care about enjoying it. I could care about connecting with you, and I care about teaching you something if you want to learn from me. And if you don't want to learn from me, just keep scrolling. <laughs> <laughs> In terms of dancing, what, 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 which are the, the styles that you usually do? Do you focus more on like breakdance kind of stuff or whatever? I like, I like pretty much every style and it would be nice to in the future like to go to different countries and learn from different cultures like different dance styles. I would love to do that and share it with people like, you know, me, me learning uh, a samba or a kizomba, you know what I'm saying? Because I've taken some classes, I've taken samba class, kizomba, not a lot. And I like all kinds of styles, so I'm, I'm open to that. But uh, I like, um, I started with um, hip hop. My sister used to teach me old school hip hop, like Running Man and stuff like that. She used to make a dance and force me to do the dances. I did not want to do it, but I had to learn it. So that's how I got my base, basic of hip hop. 
And then um, from hip hop culture, there's a lot. You know, you have b boying; it's the first style from hip hop. But then you also have like street dance styles. You have popping, locking. Um, uh, 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 what it would you have? You have also house dance. So I like all of those street styles. But my favorite, my favorite styles are with uh, isolation. So it's like with waving. Stuff like that. It's like popping. Anything that you wanna share? With us, anything that you want to say uh, before we say goodbye? Take good care of yourself. Take good care of, you know, people, you know, the people you love. And just, you know, be kind to other people. And try yeah. to enjoy, you know, the time that you have on this earth. Because it's no guarantee what happens tomorrow. You know, and um, yeah, I love you know, that you guys are on this live listening to what we have to say. Thank you so much. Yeah, have uh, an amazing night. Take care of you. Be safe. And uh, I hope to see you very soon. Thank yeah? you very much, Sharam. And uh, thank thanks you a lot. And, uh, we'll keep in touch. Sure. Right. Bye. Thank Bye. you guys for being here. Bye. We appreciate you. Bye bye.